Hello, welcome to LEV Toys. We are building a doll's house. We are making it from scratch. I lie, we're not actually making it from scratch. We are using this as the house itself and we are building the furniture from scratch. But not from scratch. We're building the furniture from Lego. That's a really bad joke. Fuck. I enjoyed it. This is as far as we got at the beginning, like in part one. And we've, so we've populated the bottom and now we need to work on the top and we're going to go in the middle first. We're going to make a bathroom because we live in the 21st century. We don't want to have to use chamber pots and washcloths. So a bath first. So we're building a bath and we're going to make it squeaky clean white because Actually, why do we make baths white? Is it just because it's so easy to see when it's dirty? But that actually makes it horrible because it's really easy to see when it's dirty and you have to clean it more often. So here's our bath and I'm going to not make the top of it white. We're going to use some of these coral pieces because I used them in the bottom in the rug just in the background there and I want to tie some of these colours in. So we have put some little studs on the top so that we can put a screen on the shower. No, it's a bath. It's a combo bath showery thing. So we need a nice big tall screen and to attach the screen here we're going to use these things. I know what they're called, but I've forgotten. And we're actually going to pull the stick bit out. They're levers, they're levers. Or if you live in a different country, they're called levers. But here in Australia, we call them levers. We rip the stick bit out and we use this bottom part to actually to actually stick our, our screen in. So here's another one that I've already ripped the stick out of because that actually required me using my teeth. Shh, don't do that. So let's put the screen in and there, that's incredibly tall. That is really, really proportionally bad. <laughs> but I don't care. Too tall and I don't care. See, look, our mini doll looks a-okay in there. And good, so we've got a bath. Now we're going to build a little bit of a wally kind of thing because I want to put a toilet roll on the wall and I can't attach it just to the to the wood that is our current doll's house. So we have to actually build a Lego wall to attach this to, just a skinny one, and building up the wall as well. What else can we put up this? <gasps> we can use this ladder for a towel rack. So let's smooth over our exposed studs and then if we put a clip in the middle there, we should be able to, should be able to stick this on here. Ah, nice. It's a towel rack. It's a heated towel rack. It's as fancy and as schmancy as they come. You can't tell it's heated, but it totally is. It is. And on the top, some sort of bottle of orange stuff and a plant, a token viney thing that's growing really, really well in the humidity of the bathroom. So that is tall. Hopefully it will fit, but we'll find out. A toilet. We need a toilet. So this is going to be a free standing toilet. <laughs> I was about to say a free flowing toilet, which would be incredibly bad. So let's see. What do we, what, how are we going to make the cistern on the top? We're going to use this coral piece again. And this is our oh, cistern for the top. Got a little silver button. And I think we might just have enough room to put a plunger in the bathroom as well, just in case that toilet isn't as free flowing as we want it to be. We don't want it too free flowing, but just free flowing enough. So bathroom furniture, let's see whether it fits because everything's quite big. Let's put this in the very back corner and then the bathtub is huge over here. And then this little tiny space over here for the toilet. And then we squish the plunger on just in the front. And I think we do have room for a bath mat. Ah, uh, there we go. <laughs> Bathroom. Done. It's packed tightly tight full. Over here. Ah, uh, mm, let's make this a hobby room. Let's do a sewing room. There are so many sewing machines that I think we can modify one to make it have no exposed studs unless they're buttons or something. So let's take, I mean, Emma has had so many sewing machines over the, the lifetime of Lego Friends. We're going to kind of mutate one. Now we're going to mold one into another one. So this, and, and just make it like slightly different too. So this is actually, it's, this is once again going to be proportionally like a bit big, but we're going to use the black lipstick as the needle, which is exactly how it was in the new, in the, uh, in the accessories shop, the accessories shop, her dress shop, the dress shoppy thing. So this goes there and then we smooth over the top and we just need a reel of thread and we're good. Oh, 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 let's use the fancy schmancy shiny material that also came in Emma's dress shop accessory shop thing, which I can't remember the name of. Okay, what else? Let's put a big long uh, reel of bobbins. All lots of colourful bobbins so that they're, you know, just to add some colour because colour is cool. I love colour. So a, a, a line of bobbins and we smooth over the top of our bobbin holder and this pattern, this pattern tile here. 
And now we need to build a table, a big sewing table to put it all on. So a chest of drawers is good for this. You always need storage space in a sewing room. Let's put our material just in here. We'll shove it in here, Could bend it up like that. Let's see, no, let's just move it out for now because we're still trying to build this table. We're going to make it quite wide or quite deep because you want to have room to spread the material out. <laughs> I realize how silly that sounds because we're building a doll's house, but I don't care. Logic is also good. So we're backfilling now. Let's, uh, let's fill in quite literally the back. We are backfilling it. Good. I think that's a nice big sewing table. Yeah, okay. That's going to fill up the space too. So so we want to smooth over the top, but we want to find out where we want our studs so that we can attach the things on top of the table so they don't fall off if we have an option. So that's going to be for the pattern. Let's put, uh, let's put this one here for, mm. let's, well, let's find out. Let's see whether we can, let's just smooth it all over and see how we go. Except I've only actually got a two by one smooth tile here in purple. So I want to move that. If I move it there, is that going to... No, that's too far back. Let's move that back. Let's move it all the way to the back. I'm just trialing and erroring things here now. And if we... So we put that there and if we... We can store the thread here. Arr, okay. And put our pattern there. But I want to extend the bobbin colours because they're, you know, they're... We've got some more space. So let's put some more colours on there. That's so pretty. Okay. Let's put the material under there. <laughs> I'm trying to decide whether to put this back because you kind of need a little bit of table room to spread the material out so it doesn't fall out, fall off everywhere, kind of. Ah, <laughs> that, that actually looks better, but we're going to put it here. We're going to put the material away down here. Everything's put away. Everything's tidy. That's nice. Let's put a stool in now and we're going to use these pieces. I don't even know what they're called, but they're reasonably new and they're going to be perfect for a little stool because we don't have to clip them onto anything and we will fill in these edges, make it actually it looks a little bit like an old fashioned piano stool or an organ stool, which is exactly what I used to use when I was using a sewing machine. When I was a kid, we used to sit on an organ stool or an old piano stool, just like that, except not in those colors. Now we need a stand for whatever we've been sewing. So we're going to use this and we're going to just put some random colorful capes on here. This one and we'll stack it with this one. Though now I kind of feel as though I want to make a dress form. Maybe I will, but I'll come back to that. If I, if I have time, I'll come back and maybe make a dress form instead of actually just having material hanging from the stand. That looks right too. Let's see whether this fits into the, it's a very small space. <laughs> so put the sewing machine over here and yeah, okay. That's, there is just enough room here for this thing that the seat's not going to fall off the edge. No, nope, we're good. Okay. Sewing room is equipped over here. We haven't got any bedrooms yet. So let's start making a bedroom. Let's make a master bedroom. So a parent's bedroom, because that's so sadly always neglected from the Lego friends houses. So parents' bedrooms are just as important. Parents need to sleep too, people. Parents get very, very tired. Being a parent is tiring. <laughs> I can guarantee you that. I feel like I haven't slept for years and I might just have to shrink myself down and do that in this bed. Now this bed, is from the Harry Potter from the Attack on the Burrow and I've actually recolored it but now I'm trying to remember how it goes back together again. So and you only have to kind of see the colors of the bedspread here at the end so I'm just trying to figure out because I don't have a lot of these coral colors so if that just shows out the end that'll be fine we'll just fill the rest here with with white because you know white's a nice common color but no one's gonna see it because we're gonna be covering it over. So yeah, like that. I've just left a space underneath that. That'll be fine. It'll be fine, right? There's just a space there under the bedspread. It's such a pretty bed design, this one though. I just love the ironwork looking, looking bed head and the bed bottom thing. <laughs> the bed bottom bit. Okay, I cannot, I just, I know that there's a gap under there and I just cannot leave it. <laughs> it's just wrong. Let me just fill it up with another color. No one's gonna see it underneath there, but now at least it's secure. <laughs> okay, let's build a bedside table. These forward facing studs are going to be very handy for what I want to do here. I want to use these panel pieces 
uh, we're gonna put them sideways and use them as little teeny tiny shelves. They're so cute, you can't really put much on them, but they're really, really cute and they're, they're just there for design. And of course we have a vase on the bedside because we are using all the plants today in this build, you will see. Okay, oh, what else can we fit in here? Maybe a little bureau, a side bureau, cabinet-y kind of thing. And I don't know quite how useful this is gonna be, but I wanna make it pretty and just a little bit different. So if we put these angled, these diamondy bits on the front, that just makes a really nice pattern. And they're almost like kind of handles for opening up the cabinet doors. I want to put a brush on the top. So we're gonna smooth over the top of everything except for this claw. So the claw is gonna help hold the brush on. Very nice. And I suspect we don't actually have a lot of room for anything else. So let's go up and have a look. See, I'm just gonna put these on a little bit straighter. Okay, right. So bed can go maybe not centrally. We might have to push the bed over to the side and that actually that fits that fit we can pop that if we put that there and it's not really a bedside table that fits quite nicely but because it is the master bedroom let's see if we can put it up here in this room which also has its own set of challenges because it's got such a, a massive gable on it so <laughs> i wonder if i can even fit this yes i can i can fit that under there there's this little pokey bit of space over here which i don't think i can fill but i'm just going to put a mat in which also came with the disney princess accessories kit accessories set from a few years ago so that is a valid lego piece that material squishy bit is lego it is <laughs> over here maybe another bedroom definitely another bedroom let's make let's make a baby's bedroom or a baby turning toddler bedroom and we're going to have definitely drawers for storage and pink and blue because they're just pastel and adorable and on the top here I think we're gonna have storage for all the toys so a coral colored turtle baby turtle and of course we need the pink teddy bear because what would be a custom build without a teddy bear and we're going to stack some nappies up on here because this is also kind of be a change table maybe and we're going to make them a little bit askew because trust me nappies do not stack tidily easily i think that looks really good okay this is where we might run into some problems because I really, really want to make a cot, but I think the toddler might be too big for the cot, but I still just want to put a cot in this build. So I'm a gunner. <laughs> I'm just going to, to face your wrath when you say to me, Ellie, a toddler doesn't need to be in a cot. Well, maybe she really likes her cot and she doesn't want to change out of it. So we're going to use the, plus I, I just wanted it because it rocks, you know, and we're using, we're making a build that doesn't actually stick, you, you don't need to stick things down to. So this is so perfect for her. I just like it rocking. <laughs> okay, how to create some upright bars for this. If we use these outward facing studs on all sides, we can use the grill pieces going upwards to make a facade of bars for the cot. Look at that, that's so tidy. So we'll do that on the other side too, but these panels are gonna be the back and the front and that's, there's a bit of a gap there, but you know what? I'm gonna allow it. It wouldn't, <laughs> it wouldn't pass industry cot standards, but this is Lego, so it's a pass. It's a pass from me. And I think it just looks so good with all of those grill pieces as the bars. That totally works. Ignore the gap, it's fine. Everything's fine. Right, so we're going to put uh, another toy in here and pretend that this is actually gonna fit our toddler. Let's find out how dire this is. It's not great, but she loves it. She just loves it so much that she does not wanna move into a toddler bed and that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is brilliant. I really, really like my cot and we're keeping it. So, right. <laughs> what else can we put in here? Lots of toys. Let's build some more toys. This one is is from the, uh, just from the, the advent calendar from the year just passed. It's my favorite mini build from the Lego Friends advent calendar because of the little heart, the little coral colored heart and the fact that he goes boing, 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 boing. It's really it's like a little wind up. He's a little wind up penguin with a tiny top hat and I just want him to be in all of my builds. Look at him, he's so cute. I think I just love him because of his coral heart feet. They're so perfect. And some building blocks, little housey building blocks. So we'll just put a couple of them in with those pointy pieces. And I think we're going to have to go up and see whether we can fit these in. So the cot in the corner. <laughs> that's so nice because it wobbles. And that's that actually, wow. All right, that fits just perfectly. And then if we poke our little, little bouncy penguin here and then put our building blocks on the side 
And is there room for anything else in here? I don't know that there is. Let's put our toddler up here. And we can use one of these flowers, these felt flowers from the Trolls. The Trolls Lego. And there's a hole in the middle of it. Ah, so that's going to help the toddler stay upright. Perfect. <laughs> I just love those flower felt pieces though. And I never thought I'd be able to use them in anything else. Right. We've got... We've got a pretty full doll's house here as it stands, but we do have two more quite significant empty spaces. They're staring at us. Let's start right up in the attic spot because the attic is so perfect for a reading nook. We're gonna make it a book nook. I just love that. We're gonna have all the books in here. So first up, we need something comfy to sit on, uh, i.e. a sofa. And this sofa is actually once again out of, it's out of the Harry Potter advent calendar from last year. And this is just going, I mean, I'm only going to modify it like the tiniest bit. So we put the seat on here and the little front seat. And then we just need the arms and they're nice and simple. We just got a couple of plates and then a couple of tiles, nice and smoothed over. And of course, this is where I'm modifying it. I'm putting a cushion on it, a nice smooth tiled cushion. It looks comfy now and it's got pink on it. That makes me happy. Okay, we've got our couch. We need a lantern up here for reading and we need books so let's build a stack of books ah books 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 a stack of books very serious looking tomes here we're going to put big rounded uh what do you call these things bindings on them <laughs> or the what do you call the bits on the edge dang why can i not remember that uh but we're gonna put this one on the top this one's also a very serious looking book it's stacked on the top and angled so that it all looks very cool and what do you call them? The spines! I knew it would come to me eventually. So we have our big serious looking books and then we've got these. One about the history of trolls, research book on sleepy softs, and this one with spells and incantations which is perfect for some attic secret of reading. So this one is definitely being looked at right now. We've got to put these up in our attic and once again see if they fit on all of our slanty sides. So that doesn't go in very far our lantern. Let's poke our stack of serious books at the back. And then our stacks of not quite as serious, but very, very interesting books uh, everywhere else. So we're going to put that one there. We're going to put this one on the seat and put our spell book over here where it is enticingly open, ready for us all to read. <laughs> we'll angle it around this way. And for a mat, yeah, I've got this beautiful paper Japanese sticker that I want to use. It's just so pretty, but it's not Lego. It's the only thing in this build that is not bona fide lego apart from the actual house itself so shh don't tell anyone okay the one room that is still not filled yet are you ready this one i've saved this one to last because it's gonna be my favorite you remember i mentioned plants we're gonna turn this one into an indoor nursery a little conservatory for granddad for granddad to hang out in and and drink his tea and just to have a lovely peaceful time so of course if he's going to be hanging out in here you have to have a comfy chair comfy chairs are the best now this piece is actually one of the aerial holdery things at the back of the ships of the lego boats i don't know what it's actual the light thing at the back no at the top I've run out of words. I don't know how to describe it, but we're going to use this as a plant stand. So we've got our first pretty little plant at the top and then we're going, I'm going to try and make as many different styles of plants in pots as I can to cram in here. It's just going to be so eclectic and fun and colorful. So we've got a pot here and with some spiky plants in it and it's got, it's got a, a wibbly bit through to the top. And on the other side, if we use this as a pot, just to use a nice vibrant red flower and it's gonna kind of cascade a little bit down here down the front nice look at our plant stand made out of a made out of a boat thingy tell me what that's called in the comments because i cannot remember and this is actually one of the lego minifigure costumes which i sliced the middle out of so that i could fit it on a mini doll and now we can use this as a nice big pot for my my, my plant sprout here and i'm just trying to jam it in Look at that. See? Perfect. Totally illegal for Lego, but it looks cool and, and nobody would know what's happening in there. This is one of my favourite pot designs ever. This actually is supposed to have a stick through it for, for stability. This pot came out of the Disney Castle and I just love its colours. It's so regal. And we're going to put a beautiful big ball of flowers i had trouble getting that out with purple and green on the top and i think i need to take that purple one off the no i need to take it off the bottom there we go that's just so beautiful 
It's really lush. It's such an elegant looking vase. Going to use a beehive now though. And the beehive is now a pot. Putting it on here for stability. That's going to be its little saucer to hold the water when it dribbles out. And in here, we're just going to make a cactusy kind of thing. So let's build up a whole world of spiky things. And then we just shove it in and they don't, they're not actually going to connect with the base. They're just going to be sitting in there. So many cheats here, but nobody knows. And it still looks really pretty. It looks perfect. It's perfectly pretty. Let's put that over there. A little one with this little black pot thing, which I just love. I love this shape. So we're going to pop it up this way. Pop the pot up this way. <laughs> it's not going to be overly stable. And we're just going to sit this purple flower in the top. A lot of not connections happening in our plant room, but I don't care. We're doing what we can with Lego. Now, let's make a footstool for Grandad, just to make it extra, extra comfy. And let's see how we can fit all this in. So plant stand in the corner, which actually takes up a bit of room with those spiky bits there off the side. We're going to have room for the other big tall pot in the corner. Just barely. Plant stand's a bit askew. <gasps> Look at that, we shoved it all in there. It's all jammed in beautifully. Now, big pot here, and we're gonna put the tiny little black pot in just next to the chair, nestled in next to the chair. And I think we've got room for our spiky cactus over here, but it's a bit tall. I don't actually, I wanna take some of the spikes off so that it's not obliterating our view of the beautiful plant at the back. Maybe one more set of spikes off. We can still tell it's a cactus. It's just a lower cactus now. That looks fantastic. Now we've got our footstool. Let's get Grandad. Does Grandad want to have a try in his new plant room? Oh, I dropped him. <laughs> Sorry, Grandad. Let's put your footstool in. That's, so I love the plant room so much. Oh my gosh, I need to do a too much plants build. I'm totally on board with that. I'm going to start planning it now and probably be ready by next year. Okay, here we go. The whole doll's house is equipped with all Lego made furniture. There we go. That was the word I was looking for. Furniture. Except for that one mat up in the attic and we're not going to talk about that. We often hide things in the attic that we don't talk about. <laughs> Shh, family secrets. <laughs> okay. A few of you have mentioned, actually mentioned in the comments of part one that this doll's house is just crying out to have lights installed. And I won't lie, that idea actually is really exciting, but also quite frightening. But I'm going to see if I can do it. And if I can, I will do a video on that. So make sure you subscribe. Leave me a comment. Let me know what your favorite part of the build was. And I will be back with another video very, very soon. So I will see you then. <laughs> okay, bye.